This is study number 12 from Fernando Soares, Opus 60, and follow the lesson for free, of course, but I do have an edition of all 25 etudes in Opus 60. And number 12 is kind of in the middle, so, you know, it starts off with pretty easy etudes um, and then progresses to the mid-intermediate and then to the, to the late intermediate or even the last one, maybe even early advanced. So number 12 is definitely a, <clears throat> definitely a step up in terms of the the complexity of what's happening in the different voices. Up to this point, you know, you've had some nice melodic material, some nice arpeggios and chord material, and then a little bit of combination of like um, arpeggiation and melody together. And then on this study though, suddenly you have um, quite a bit of an increased activity in the bass voice and some overlapping of the of the top and lower voice. So you actually have a little bit of counterpoint here and there. So not, it's not that it's more awkward and it's not that it's fast, but it's, it is more active in the left hand and a little bit more complex to, to read through easily. So let's kind of just talk about, you know, that, that added complexity and then we'll just do a, a small walkthrough. There's not too much to talk about. The left hand fingering is all included in my edition. Um, right hand fingering, we'll talk a little bit just about um, a debate about what, what you can use. We might as well just start there. When um, there's a really clear, um, you know, voice separation, I often like to put the lower voice in the thumb and the upper voice in my fingers. And in this case, I pretty much do that most of the time. So most of the downstem notes I do with my thumb, even if they occur on the second string, just to keep those voices separate in my right hand and for consistency throughout. So thumb, 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 thumb. Thumb, thumb, thumb. Some of those bars though, like bar four, would probably be, from a technical standpoint, would be nice to go I am, P, I, and that's totally acceptable. But like I said, sometimes I like to just keep my thumb in that lower voice just for consistency. As the pieces get more difficult, that's not always going to be possible. Um, if the speed, if the tempo goes way up, then you know repeated thumb notes um, can become more difficult. But this one's not too fast, so it's definitely possible. So whatever fingering you use is okay, as long as you are aware of the, the voice separation and that you're bringing that out in your playing. Like I said, one easy way to do that is to keep the lower voice in the thumb, just to be consistent. The upper voice, then you just alternate fingers. Any big leaps, you can throw in the A finger to, to get that leap. Um, I think besides that, uh, we'll just do a walkthrough and I'll just talk about some of the things as they occur. But remember, when you have two clear voices, you can play the voices separately. So you could play just the upper voice. could just play the lower voice. It's not quite as satisfying because the bass becomes active and then holds off, but nevertheless it's important to to do that to make sure that you understand each voice kind of on its own. Okay so we start off with the third finger here because the fourth finger is going to be used on the on the G quite soon afterwards. So that just kind of sets up that position. Even though you could do both with four, you have time because there's open strings, but sometimes you just go with shapes for um, you know, security and, and hand position. And 
And then, you know, right at the end of that section there, a little bit more activity in both voices at the same time. There's lots of ways you could have done that. Um, I could have closed the G on the on the second string, but I went with Fernando Soros fingering in this case. So just jump down, and then you're in the right position for everything that comes next. I do the next section with one and three, and then switch to one two. I've seen people um, in other editions and players um, put their second finger down and just do a stretch which makes great sense. It's, that works really well. You can just keep your second finger down. Once you get past that first stretch, you're, you can just stay in the same um, hand position. Uh, because, you know, because like I could have students that are more on the beginner level playing this or, or people more advanced, um, I went with a, a change in fingering in case that stretch was uncomfortable, but I wanted to point out that stretch because that is very possible to put your second finger there and just do the stretch. It doesn't bother me at all, but it might bother some people. So I went with one and three, and then just switching to one, two. I generally use thumb and I finger for that section. And then it's almost a repeat. A bit more activity, especially here. That's a pretty active section um, section compared to everything else that we've played so far. So first finger guides down, second finger guides up, fourth finger guides up, jump. Position change, position change. So lots of like individual movements, but just, just practice it the way I just demonstrated a few times. So like being aware of what fingers the guide finger. Fourth finger guide, jump. Shift. So when you do those shifts, instead of like melding different positions together, just do an actual shift with your whole hand moving. Keep that rhythm nice and crisp and, and, and bouncy. Nice little etude, increased activity. It's starting to sound much more like some of the other opuses that Sor has written. So um, I hope you enjoy that. Um, it's it's if it's a little bit of a step up for you, just go slow. You know, if I take some of the tempos at the tempo that I find ideal for the pieces, but a slower tempo would work just fine. And you definitely want to choose one for practicing.